still no flicker. See? So I'm assuming some of you guys are new. Uh, maybe you're new subscribers from one of my videos that I made about a month ago about the Godox SL60W LED light that I'm using right now. It's lighting me right here. Um, so thank you for subscribing. Welcome. Uh, and I wanted to make this video because a lot of you guys in the comment section of that video were kind of worried about buying this light because you've heard some rumors about it causing ridiculous amounts of flicker at high shutter speeds and high frame rates. So I wanna discuss that a little bit today. So larger YouTubers like Tommy Calloway have done a ton of videos on this light. And recently he just put out a video cause I guess he just discovered it that uh, he wanted to talk about how this light flickers and how um, at high shutter speeds and high frame rates, 180 FPS to 50th of a second, that kind of thing. He wanted to highlight in his video the flickering issue that he's been having and he did and it was pretty significant and I think that video kind of turned a lot of people off in a way. Um, another guy in my comment section named Von Wild had said that he bought this light and he was really excited about it and uh, now he regrets buying it because he shoots weddings and apparently he had some flickering issues in his footage and so it kind of wrecked his footage which sucks but um, I think those kind of comments and these kind of videos are turning people off to this light and I think it's a little bit misleading because for me, I didn't have any flickering issues. I did tests at 24 FPS at 150, 160, 180th, 1 100th, 1 1 25th, 1 1 60th, 1 200th, 1 250th, all the way up until 1 1,000th uh, 1 1, of a second shutter speed. I got no flickering at all. I did 60 frames a second at 1 1 25th of a second uh, shutter speed. I did 120 FPS at 250th of a second shutter speed. I did 180 FPS at 320th of a second shutter speed and I did 240 FPS at 500th of a second shutter speed. So keeping that 180 degree rule, I found no flickering at all in any of those. And I did those tests at 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100% light output. I did it for all of those different outputs and I still got no flickering whatsoever. So Tommy Callaway mentioned that it pulsates at lower outputs, like 10% output because the LEDs are so cheap, they wanna make it seem like they're more expensive than they actually are. So what they do is they take cheap LED lights they allow them to go down to ridiculously low output levels. But in reality, our eyes just can't see that they're going between 10 and let's say 50 output, 50% 50 output. They're going back and forth within you know, a matter of milliseconds. Our eyes can't see it, but our cameras do because we have shutter speeds that are really high and frame rates that are really high. But I don't think this is true because because my light doesn't do that or else I would get flickering at those shutter speeds and at those frame rates. So I just think some units are a little bit more bugged out than others. Just like any product, there's gonna be some faulty units. And in our case scenario, unfortunately, because they're such cheap lights, it's a lot more than usual are faulty units. But I don't think that's a reason to discredit this light entirely and say it's trash because I can't shoot at high frame rates and shutter speeds with it because I actually can. So here's my solution to you. Unfortunately, these lights do have uh, some problems with flickering every once in a while. Some people say that they do, some people say that they don't, which means that some of these lights do. That's unfortunate. The thing that you're gonna have to do is find a retailer that sells these lights uh, that one is trusted around the country, trusted around the world, um, and then two fulfills their orders. So I'm thinking about Amazon and B&H Photo. So they both fulfill their orders and they both are very well accredited in the United States and all across the world um, in refunds, in treating their customers properly. So basically you're gonna have to buy this light, get it in the mail, immediately test it for flickering with high frame rates and high shutter speeds. And then if you get flickering, you're gonna have to call Amazon or B&H and say, look, I got a faulty unit, please send me a new one. And then once you get your new one, you're gonna have to do the same thing. You're gonna have to go through and do all these tests. And if it still has flickering issues, you're gonna have to send it back again and rinse and repeat and rinse and repeat until you get a unit that actually works well. And unfortunately, that's really annoying. But you have to remember, you're saving five or 600 bucks by buying this light instead of the 120D, the 120D Mark II. Um, and when you're on a budget, 
that hassle of going back and forth with the company that sell, sold it to you um, sometimes isn't that much of a hassle really because you're just scrapped, you're strapped for cash and you'd really like a light that just does well and is high quality and has a lot of output. So just because your light flickers doesn't mean that all of the units flicker. I think it's just a faulty, faulty batch of lights, unfortunately. So yeah, if you're scared to buy this light, please don't be. Um, even though you might have to go through the process of sending back and forth and back and forth with with faulty lights, please don't be scared uh, to buy this light. It's worth it because of how cheap it is and what it could do for the price. So that's all I wanted to talk to you guys about today. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a thumbs up. If you didn't, leave a comment down below and tell me why. I'd love to hear your feedback and I'm always open to criticism. Subscribe if you haven't already and you wanna see more content like this, but that's gonna do it for this one. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.